Smallest form factor water-cooled build, you ask? Yes, please. Let's get to it, shall we? Intel Gaming asked me to showcase a small form factor water-cooled build, and how can I not jump at the chance? I mean, you guys have been asking me to do one. I've been itching to do one. It's like a win-win for sure. Now, before I jump into the build, I wanted to briefly talk about the kind of planning and work I do when building out a small form factor, and more specifically, water-cooled small form factor PC. First, I spend time looking at the radiator clearances, etc., on the main website and order the case. You have to have the case. You just got to plan with the case. Now, I've worked with the NR200P a number of times. So the experience plus what I read up on and watched got me a good idea of what I was going to do and what I was going to be working with. Now, the second part of this is a test fitting of the radiators with the fans and seeing what kind of room it's going to take. Now, this right here shows that the method isn't always perfect, especially when you live stream a build and schedule it while pre-planning can be super critical, but then your parts show up late and yada, yada, yada. And because it's scheduled, you don't have all the flexibility in the world. So in this instance, when we put in the Noctua NFF 12 fans, they were just a little bit too thick when I popped in my GPU, which if you're gonna do a build on your own and you can just pop it out and order new fans, that's great. But when you're entertaining a small stadium of people, well, they demand to be entertained and they wanna see a finished build. It was a, it was a travesty. Okay, back on track. Now, once I did all of my test fits, I had an idea of how I was gonna do my tube runs. With this being soft tubing, it was much easier because I was just looking to ensure that my fittings had the clearances I wanted, and when I executed on the build, I had everything I needed. Again, it's a bit different when you're going to do a live stream because you're gonna do the whole build in a set amount of time. But if you weren't, you can just stop, take your time, and if you hit a roadblock, just order and fix it. <laughs> Same thing for YouTube. Yeah, I'm looking at all you YouTubers. Try doing it live stream there, buddy. <laughs> or, or buddy et. <laughs> I also bench tested the entire build, which if you want to know more about, you can watch this video about it right here. But I essentially ensured that all of the components worked, updated my BIOS, and actually installed Windows and the RGB software all outside of the actual PC case. I also, after I put the GPU block on the Titan, quickly popped it in and ensured that it also was in working order before proceeding. Again, if you've got a GPU block on it, it's okay to pop it in, turn it on, just make sure you turn it off before it overheats. You've got about three to five minutes, and that's more than enough to make sure that it posts and work. Now, this is a hugely important step in the process because once you have liquid and everything in it, it is a terrible pain in the butt to have to drain your loop and take everything apart just to figure out what is wrong with your build. Do it before you put it in the case. Fix it before you put it in the case. So that way, when you do all this prep and you actually get into the build, you can do what I just did, and that is just enjoy the process. So that's it, guys. Let's get to building. We're gonna take you on a journey, guys, and let's talk a little bit about the parts. Now, at the center of this is Intel's flagship 11900K CPU. Uh, we're using the Vengeance RGB Pro SL. Uh, this is 3200 megahertz. For power supply, V8550 SFX power supply. This is the Cooler Master NR200P. Asus ROG Strix Z590i Gaming. We've already done all the testing on it. Uh, it's basically, it's already actually, the Intel CPU is already sitting inside of it. For water cooling components, because hey, this is stuff that you guys don't get to see very often. We're using all EK. They're EK Quantum Vector uh, water block. They're Quantum Kinetic pump res combo. You know, we got Got the bags, bag of fittings right here. Um, and then for our GPU, we have our Titan RTX. For storage, we're using a WD Black uh, SN750 one terabyte. We're using the uh, Noctua NF F12 um, 140 millimeter fans. Uh, we're using the PC Ice. This is low per conductive performance fluid. It's Prima Chill, which I love Prima Chill stuff. EK um, soft dark tubing as well. There's all our parts. Let's go and start getting it built. Look at this, look at this blue thermal paste. Look at that, it's like Intel blue. Okay, so we got our thermal paste on and now we're gonna grab our block. <gasps> dun, 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 dun. Hey, look, they give, th ooh, look. This comes with Thermal Grizzly. Thermal Grizzly, okay, that's cool. Okay, thank you, EK. They don't use a, like a standard black back plate. 
They use like uh, this rubber that goes in between it so it can do a lot of mounting pressure. And so it's one of those things that if you just don't line it up correctly, like then none of it works. And then it's like, oh, it was, it was so perfect before. And then. Okay, first part in. That was only like forever. It's an interesting M.2, it's actually stacked. There's a little pin here for basically controlling the RGB, but if you look, you can actually see there's actually another M.2 that you could stick underneath it, and it also has thermal pads. So it's like, you can like basically dual up your M.2s and it's on both sides, which is pretty crazy. Okay, right, here we go, let's throw this on real quick. Okay, so we got that. Now let's go ahead and put in our RAM. Ooh! They did it, was I that? Did you hear that? Listen, listen, listen. That was, did you hear that? That click is good. So let's get our case stripped. Okay, so there's all of our stuff. And what we're gonna do first is let's put our radiator together and our Noctua fans. Okay, so let's grab our case. Okay, radiator and fans is in now. Let's go ahead and get our pump in. So that's the next step. So let's get our pump in so you guys can see that. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the PSU panel. We have lots of room to get this one tube run. First tube run in. So this one is gonna go right here. Okay, there we go. Let's get our power supply in real quick. Here's our very huge, look at how monster it is. Get on. I am gonna smell it. Let's get it. Ooh, it smells like Teen Spirit. And now we can go ahead and put in our motherboard. So let's go ahead and mount our GPU real quick. Put our top on. Now let's get this mess kind of figured out here. So here's what our build looks like in its current state. Everything looks good. So like you have a single cable that's like hiding everything here. So it looks, that looks normal. All of our cables are kind of below this. You can just see the little bit here, but for the most part, it's a nice clean. It's got a gray black. We're gonna get everything else kind of done here in a minute, but the build itself is actually in good shape. Now what we're gonna do is just hide the rest of the cables in the back and then leave the pump cable out, so we're good there. The hard part is kind of done. Now we just gotta finish our tube runs. Okay, now for the fun part. Let's fill this loop. Okay, this is pre-treatment. Put that in there, so that'll help keep the fungal and any potential issues. And this, Let's grab my C750. Now, turn it on its side. You guys ready? Okay, well I alluded to an issue I noticed once the build was completed. Heck, even during the stream I almost had to stop because I just saw how close those fans were to the GPU. It was, it was a travesty. Now I will cover this a little bit more when I get to the thermals here shortly. But how did it do thermally? Well, in short, okay. 
This was a PC built in the Cooler Master NR200P in a slightly negative pressure configuration, running a mixture of Cooler Master MF120 halos, that's right, I added RGB after the string, and Noctua NF-F12 high static pressure fans. Now, if you want to get into more detail on the barrage of tests and what we do to actually see these numbers and get these numbers, you can check out our testing methodology video right here. I, I urge you to. It'll be science. You'll be smarter. When we had things just sitting idle, it was a story like any other when we kicked things off with thermals. The CPU was sitting at 42 degrees in the open case scenario, but jumped a whopping 17 degrees to 59 in the closed case. Yikes. Now, when we put this thing under load in our standard IDA 64, running for 30 minutes straight, we saw the CPU jump to 89 degrees, both in open and closed, and actually start to thermal throttle because the spikes weren't completely manageable by our air-starved 240 millimeter radiator at the bottom. Now, this is absolutely easy enough to fix with a simple replacement of our NFF12 fans with NFA12 by 15 fans, which will give us a nice gap because they're thinner and better airflow and get air moving through that radiator, which is what we really needed. Now, given this is a showcase build, we wouldn't really do that repair because it's just meant to look pretty and let's just admit it, it already kind of does. Now for GPUs, it's all roses. When just pushing the GPU, the radiator and airflow was more than enough to cool our little monster, even with restricted airflow under load. When idle, the GPU was sitting at 31 degrees in the open case scenario and only jumped by three degrees to 34 when we closed the case all up. Now, when we ran through our barrage of GPU tests, we got the temps up to 64 degrees in open case and 67 in closed case. More than respectable temperatures and could have even been better if we had done that little fan swap we talked about earlier. Okay, so let's, let's stop talking about thermals. We know what that is. How does it do with games? Well, first up, let's talk about single player RTX experiences, given this is an NVIDIA GPU paired with an Intel 11900K and specifically an NVIDIA RTX Titan. I mean, come on, we don't get to play with those very often. For a Tomb Raider running at 1440p with DLSS on the highest preset, we saw an average frame rate of 137 FPS across the runs we did on the game. For Metro Exodus, running at 1440p running with ray tracing on high and DLSS set to balance, we saw an average FPS of wah wah, 44 FPS. Man, we needed those next gen CUDA cores right there. Now it's good to see those numbers don't suffer too much versus 3080s and 3070s outside of Metro Exodus, of course, but that's where RTX gets a big boost from those next gen cores. So let's talk about MP games. Well, for Apex Legends, running on low visual settings, sitting at 1440p, again, optimizing for frame rates, specifically competitively, we're sitting at 143 FPS for our multiple sessions. For Warzone, again, 1440p, competitive gameplay, maximizing for FPS, we saw 167 FPS. And finally for Fortnite, again, Wanting it to go as fast as humanly possible, you could skirt that 360 FPS bar barrier coming in at a nice and fluid 365 frames per second. Again, not bad for a $2,500 last generation card, but you can definitely see the chinks in the armor and the age lines given outside of Apex, a 3070 could handily beat it in both Fortnite and Call of Duty. If you wanted to build this little behemoth, you would have a heck of a portable gaming system on your hands. Even more so if you'd done the fan switch to the NFA 12 by 15s and also throwing in a water-cooled 3070 or better yet a 3080. Heck, this, the PSU we put in here could totally handle it. Were you surprised with these numbers? And what do you think you would do with that little water-cooled behemoth? I'd love to know all of those things down in the comments below. Now, while you're down there, make sure you slap that subscribe button with that like button and ring that notification bell so you get a notification each and every time we have a video go live right here on YouTube. Now, speaking of live, did you know we actually have a live show? That's right, it's every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday starting at 5.30 p.m. We do live builds, we have great conversations. It is a meaningful moment in your life and you're missing it. Also, you should check out our amazing community over at discord.gg slash robitech. Guys, it is absolutely awesome. We have over 13,000 people there. We talk about builds, we talk about dad jokes, we do memes, we hug virtually via forums. It's great. Also check out all of our socials. We got the Instagram, we got the TikTok, we got the Twitter, we got all of them and it's all at Robitech. And we hope to see you on the next one.